First lady.
much for your time. You're Thank you, Congressman Hennepin. Now I want to present to you a very charming lady, the wife of our next governor of North Carolina, Mrs. Dan Moore. Thank you so much for this opportunity of speaking to you. I bring you greetings from the Moore family, including Dan and Dan Jr., who are now at the airport to meet the president. Edith, our daughter, who has flown down on the Air Force number one with the president. My daughter-in-law, Fran, in whom I am well pleased. And may I say this to you? Would that each of you had the opportunity that I have had to travel on the Lady Bird Special to know Mrs. Johnson, the lovely, poised, cultured, wonderful person that she is. To know her is to love her. May I exact a promise from you tonight. On November the 3rd, will you keep North Carolina in the Democratic column? <laughs> This is about the 12th or 14th uh, meeting we've had since this morning at 7.45. My co-chairman is a distinguished majority and leader in the House of Representatives, Hale Boggs of Louisiana. I wanted to say a few words. He's a great Democrat. Governor Hodges, Mr. Johnson, distinguished Democrats, ladies and gentlemen. This has been a beautiful day all day long. We started this morning in Alexandria, that historic city in your sister state of Virginia. And all day long, the First Lady has been on this train, the Lady Bird Special, coming through the great states of Virginia and North Carolina. And at each stop, we have had friendly, enthusiastic, southern crowds just like this one here in Johnson County, North Carolina tonight. Now, you know, uh, I'm a southerner. I come from Louisiana. And I might say to you that... Uh, Referring to myself, I'm as southern as red beans and rice, but maybe I'm also also as southern as the cotton and tobacco and peanuts and grits and red-eyed gravy. Now let me tell you this. Mrs. Johnson, the first lady of this land, is a southern lady, born and reared in the south. And President Lyndon Jackson is the first southern president since the Civil War. And <laughs> now, you know, the Republicans go out here and they talk about what they call the southern strategy. And that so-called strategy was they were going to carry the South. Well, now it's gotten out of the place that they're not going to carry Maine. They're not going to carry Vermont. They're not going to carry New Hampshire. They're not going to carry Arizona. They're not going to carry a state in the north, in the east, in the midwest. And I'd be surprised if they carried North Carolina, wouldn't you? No, they're not going to carry any states. There's a good reason for it. We have got the greatest president that this country has ever had. We have got the finest country that the world has ever seen, and we want to keep it that way. And I tell you, my heart has beat with pride all day long as I've seen this lovely lady and her lovely daughter meet with her fellow Southerners and talk in behalf of our great president and the response elsewhere has been as warm and as friendly as yours is, is here tonight and I'm proud to participate in this. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 
Where's old Harold Cooley? There he is. Come here, Harold. <coughs> you know Harold Cooley? is the chairman of the House Committee on Agriculture. I don't know of any position more important to North Carolina than that position. And the tobacco farmers have had some problems, just like other farmers have. But let me tell you this. Think about what it was when the Republicans were in in 1932, and think about what it is now. And Harold Cooley has been one of the men, if not the leading man, in promoting the cause of the tobacco farmers in North Carolina. You know him. I shan't introduce him to, to you, but I will present him to you. My dear friend and colleague, Harold Cooley, your colleague. Hail, Bob's. Ladies and gentlemen, friends. I have been given a very delightful assignment. First, I want to say that I am happy and delighted to be here with your beloved mayor and with Billy Britt, my beloved friend, and with other distinguished citizens of your county. This county is near and dear to me and has been for 30 years. I know that what Hale Bong said struck a note in your hearts because all of us know how vital the tobacco program is to all of us. That program is in trouble, but I can assure you that I have known our president and the next president for 30 long years. I knew him when he came to the House of Representatives why he distinguished himself. I knew him in the Senate of the United States where he was held in such high esteem by his colleagues that he was elected majority leader. I knew him for three years as vice president of the greatest nation on earth. And I've known him for 10 months as the president of that great nation. It's a great honor and a great privilege for me to stand on this platform tonight and present to you the first lady of America, yes, the first lady of the world. And to tell you that they both understand your problems and my problems, and I have been assured that the president and his lovely wife will help us solve our problems in the days and the months ahead. Now, I take great pleasure. I take great pleasure in presenting to you the first lady of the world, Lady Bird.
Well, if I were you, I wouldn't let anybody send off a slice of Johnson County for any reason. <laughs>
I want to thank Mrs. J.T. Temple for coming out tonight because I know it was a great effort and I appreciate it. I want to, <coughs> I want to say to you uh, wonderful people here in Johnson County and surrounding counties that you have a little bonus because we are changing trains here to get on another line and I'm going to ask if you don't mind taking a few minutes more I'm going to ask one or two other people to say just a word to you. you and we had many mayors come down on the train with us. And I'd like to, Mr. Mayor Wiggs, if he would not say a word for his town and the other surrounding towns. Thank you, Mrs. Johnson, your charming daughter, all the people on the Lady Bird Express, especially. We welcome you to Selma, Johnson County, in the heart of eastern North Carolina. We are happy, proud, and honored to have you here pay us this visit this evening. And we hope you'll come back to see us soon. Mrs. Johnson, in the next two or three minutes, is coming down and shake hands with a few of you, and I'm going to have... I'm going to have Congressman Fountain, Congressman Fountain take about a half a minute to a minute to give greetings, and then Congressman Bonner follows him to give greetings. Congressman Fountain. You know, I wish I had the time to say the things I'd like to say to you wonderful people. It's wonderful to be over here in the area of my friend and colleague, Dave Henderson. We lost about 2,000 or 3,000. Yeah. Yeah, you shipped 200 out of here. Well, friend, yeah. Al, Julie, who has meant so much to Eastern North Carolina as a member of the Congress and chairman of the Agricultural Committee. And also in the county of my first cousin, your clerk of court, Mrs. Nora Sutherland. You know, Linda Bird said it's wonderful to live in a country where we can disagree without being disagreeable. I think it's wonderful also to be in a great part of the Democratic Party where we can disagree, yes, even with the President of the United States, and yet recognize that his leadership is so desperately needed in this hour of our nation's destiny. We have in Lyndon Johnson the most qualified, the best prepared man for the President of the United States that we have had in all of our history. And so let us, and so let us all support every Democrat on the Democratic ticket from the courthouse to the White House in this great state of ours. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank the mayor for presenting the gift of the job. 